have with us uh, from Grasim Nuvo, uh, now Mr. Sushil Agarwal as well as Dilip Kaur with us. Thanks so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Of course, uh, the merger is complete and many congratulations for this mega merger by the run rate with uh, you clocking 9,800 crore rupees of consolidated revenue as per the run rate, 40,000 crore rupees company in terms of revenue for the full financial year. So many congratulations on this humongous task. But now that it's set, Another leg of uh, this particular transaction, Mr. Agarwal, is something that the market is watching out for and waiting very anxiously for. That is uh, the demerger of uh, the financial services uh, company that's done effective from 4th of July. But when is it listing as far as uh, the Birla capital is concerned? So as you, as you, as you rightly said, um, uh, the demerger actually has taken place. and. Uh, and the, the next step is to allot shares of Ayurveda Capital to the Grassim shareholders because post merger of Nuvo with Grassim, mm -hmm. the Grassim shareholders will get a shares of uh, Ayurveda Capital. Mm -hmm. That has been done today actually, is, is, is been done today. And, and thereafter the, another piece of activity which is left, which is more, more of a procedure, mm -hmm. where we have to go through uh, stock exchange, SEBI, for their final approval for the listing of other capital. So you have given a target of Q2 FY18. Are you going to still meet it? Yes. You're, you're sure about that. Okay, one more question but on the back. You, know, you, you can't take uh, these targets uh, which are, because targets when, when we said that's something which is in our control. But there's a regulatory uh, piece around where you have to get the approvals of SEBI and stock exchange. Hmm. To that extent, uh, you know, those targets can be beyond us, but uh, they, we don't see any, any challenges as, as we speak today. All right, and one more word on the valuations. Now, uh, you last did one transaction some time back with uh, Pringji Invest, and uh, which pegged the valuation of uh, the financial services company at 32,000 crore rupees, even though it was a small stake sale. Now that uh, the Grassim Industries shareholders are going to get the, the shares of the company in the ratio of five is to seven, the market expectation is building on a 50,000 crore rupees valuation. Can you tell us uh, what is the figure that you're looking at and based on what is this kind of valuation being, is being driven at? So it's, it's, it's extremely difficult for me to kind of answer this question because uh, valuation is something uh, it's not in my control. Uh, in our control is uh, do our operations uh, hmm. in, a, in a right way and that's what we keep doing and it's for shareholders and investors to decide what value they want to give to the operation of a particular company. So I think I'll leave this question there because uh, clearly the valuation of companies is something which you can't really uh, get a fix on. All right, so the market intelligence suggests that at 72,000 crore rupees market cap, your uh, post, uh, you know, uh, the holding company discount of 50,000 crore rupees has been accounted for in terms of the valuation of the financial services, um, which is going to be a separately listed entity. But one question uh, definitely on uh, the overall performance. 50% rise in terms of EBT as far as the NBFC business is concerned in this quarter. That's a very good growth rate. Is the overall financial services business the fastest growing um, arm of uh, Grassim Industries? So yes, on, on a relative term, this is one of those fastest growing business for, for uh, Grassim. And uh, I think we'll talk more uh, when Ajay is around on each of those business segments. But yes, directionally, I would say that uh, this is one of those fastest growing business for the company. Of course, Mr. Birla has also talked, spoken about the trust that he is putting and the trust also in this particular business. But Mr. Gore, talking about uh, the present uh, quarter in terms of the standalone business yeah. of uh, Grassim and uh, BSF business, uh, that has uh, uh, done uh, fairly all right uh, in terms of the price stability. How would you predict the prices in the next quarter, coming quarter, it's also yeah. linked to cotton prices and yeah. many say that cotton prices could really soften going forward. See, the, the thing is that there, there is a cotton price linkage and there is an international uh, price of USF in the Chinese market, so there are different parameters. Hmm. Now cotton, there is expectation that the, that the crop may be better this year in India, but still the China still produces less cotton than what they consume. Hmm. So the cotton price is governed by the year-end stocks. Right. So here in stocks are still going to come down globally and in China as well. So we do expect a reasonably firm cotton prices and as we speak today, hmm. the cotton prices are 119 rupees which are 17% which are higher than YOY. Hmm. So what we expect is the VSF prices will be stable going forward. It's difficult to predict but based on the supply demand, 
and, and what is happening in China, there is no new capacity coming. So the capacity addition is lower than the mm. demand growth. So we expect a fairly stable regime for VSF going forward. In terms of expansion and de-bottlenecking, how is that happening? So I think what we are doing is uh, both part of our business uh, at a grassing standalone level, which is the viscose and the chemical uh, piece. Uh, there are capacity additions which is taking place. Mm. In chemical business, uh, we are uh, we are adding capacity at the uh, reliable uh, location of ours, and debottlenecking also is taking place uh, in, in chemical part of business. And this goes also. Uh, there is a mm. around 160 tons per day mm. uh, debottlenecking which is which is taking place. There are part of debottlenecking which 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 does not really require any capex, and part which requires and uh, broadly around 125 crores is what. Yeah. So we are spending on the debottlenecking uh, capex, and then uh, given the strong demand of uh, viscose fiber, we are likely to kind of uh, make further investment mm. in the new capacity. So mm. around 680 uh, crores is what uh, the board has given us approval to kind of uh, 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 make more investment in, in viscose capacity. All right. So more expansion, more volume uh, growth is what we are expecting. Yeah, because, and by when? yeah, because what is happening? Our plants are fully stretched. Like in the quarter gone by also, we are almost 100% capacity utilization. Mm. So, and, um, and, the, and the VSF market is growing faster than the other fibers, mm. almost twice the rate. So we are having a double digit growth on VSF. Mm. So I think we look for uh, a, a healthy growth and therefore we would like to add capacity going forward. So we are right now uh, working out different configurations. Right. Uh, and then maybe in, in a quarter's time, we'll come back with the firm plans. All right, so no visibility yeah. on how much capacity yeah, addition. Yeah. We, we do want to expand. We are working on the plan, but we depend upon our supply demand studies and, and what kind of investment you want to make. So, so, so Mr. Gaur, uh, talking about the GST uh, impact on your business, how has that been? How is the quarter impacted by that? And the next quarter, are we going to see any more impact? See, the, the GST came out on 1st July, so, so basically the, uh, June we had the destocking in the which we have spoken about and destocking not only in our industry, all industries it happened, so it was expected. So what we did was in the month of June we focused more on exports, so yeah. our exports were 9% more than the previous quarter yeah. and by virtue of that we could still sustain our volumes despite the destocking in the value chain. All right. Now it's too early to say what happened but I think uh, things are will re equilibrate Mm. And we are seeing an uptick already in the in the market. So I think going forward, we don't see any major challenge. And you can always fall back on your export yeah, strategy right, as yeah, well yeah, and improve right, yeah, that. Yeah. In terms of chemi chemicals margins, that has been lower. That has contracted on a YOY basis. Yeah. What is the reason for that? One of the reasons is I think the caustic market is doing exceedingly well. The caustic prices have been very good. But as when you make caustic, you make chlorine also. And chlorine disposal is what is the big issue. So the chlorine market has been very, very slow and there has been, they have to, to dispose chlorine on a negative value and that has eroded into the margins. Is that going to continue going forward? So, what is the outlook on the margins? So what we are doing is we are working more on value added products from chlorine. So last quarter also we grew by 12%. Mm. So as we go forward, we are make, making more products from chlorine and I think it will remain a challenge, but mm. hopefully it should improve as we go along. Mr. Agarwal, uh, even though we are talking about all these businesses on a standalone basis, but your largest contributor to revenue still remains uh, the cement business. Of course, Ultratech results are out and the volumes have been flat on a YOY basis. Are we uh, losing market share to bigger competition like an ACC Ambuja while the company is also saddled with the integration of the large acquisition made uh, from GP Cement? So I don't think uh, in, in one quarter we can start judging whether we are, whether we are losing market share. I think JP was a, is a big acquisition for the company and, uh, and, and hopefully we will continue to kind of, uh, remain on as a, as a leader uh, in, this, in this space. So I don't think one quarter one can judge the, whether we lose market share. All right. And uh, in terms of uh, idea, so that's also one of uh, the businesses in which Grasim has a substantial stake. Now, of course, uh, that business is also very competitive. I have asked you this question earlier also, and I'll uh, again uh, ask you now, given the changes in the market condition in the telecom sector, is there a reason for Grasim to utilize its balance sheet and the benefit of the group to help in pumping some cash into IDEA or for the group to increase its stake in IDEA going forward? So as, as uh, earlier uh, when we spoke about this subject and I think uh, there was a clear mention that uh, as of now IDEA has not made up any, any uh, capital raising plans 
and as and when they they make that and depending on what kind of instrument they use mm. whether uh, whether grass will uh, participate it will all depend because mm. if there are right issue possibly we to maintain our ownership in that company mm. we might uh, participate in the rights of uh, of that company mm. as of now there is no plan from idea mm. so it's, it's very theoretical kind of question no no i understand but from a strong denial now you are saying that uh, there is a possibility if and when idea decides to raise funds that's what i wanted to understand because uh, the street definitely uh, is uh, is uh, looking at this particular aspect while idea vodafone are going ahead with the merger process so i think you know i, I don't want to mix up uh, and i don't want to give an, uh, different messages I think clearly what we are saying is idea has not uh, come out with any uh, fundraising plan, mm. and so far Grassim is concerned. Mm. Uh, Grassim in no way uh, is putting any money into into telecom business as of now, mm. unless instruments suggest that mm. for the maintaining that ownership, if you have to uh, put in some money, yes, Grassim will explore and eventually Grassim board has to decide whether that's the right use of their money. All right, but in terms of overall uh, capital allocation now of this large and I would call Grassim Industries as a conglomerate now with so many different businesses. That was how, I would say. Yes. So, so how how would you uh, explain the capital allocation going forward for the company? So, capital allocation is very easy. I think you know wherever wherever we can make a, a decent return, mm. I, I think that's where the capital will be. So, uh, where are you focusing on right so now? We more? just spoke about uh, uh, two places where the capital is being. Uh, put in. But that's self-generating. I would say VSF can generate the kind of cash that you are putting in the expansion, sure. given the numbers. Absolutely. So the extra cash that you have on your balance sheet that is uh, 2300 crore rupees net cash that you have ended the quarter with. So based on that, if there is more to be uh, raised, what is the business that you're betting on? Is it financial services that is going to get a lot of support coming in? So again, it, it will depend whether financial services would come to the parent for for any financial support. Mm -hmm. but yes, if 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 the business if the business does need, mm -hmm. and if we believe that uh, that investment gives us a higher return than where we uh, alternative investment plans are, I'm sure board will look at those uh, possibilities. Looking at the kind of valuations that your financial services business is commanding, and we'll know uh, the the final numbers when it really lists by the before the end of this quarter, hopefully. Uh, do you think that your plans of uh, the AB Capital really uh, making it to a one lakh crore company would be faster than you earlier thought? Uh, I wish we, we should get into that club as soon as we can. And is there further value unlocking that can be expected uh, from different offshoots of uh, that business? Right now, I don't think we have any plan of uh, listing any other operating companies under, under AB Capital. All right. And, uh, Finally, I would uh, say that uh, what would be the overall strategy of uh, the group going forward? Is there a broader vision and framework that you're working with? No, Mr. Villa kept, uh, kept saying that the business in which we operate, we have to be uh, those in leadership uh, space and that's what will continue to remain our strategy of the group.